Hello everyone, this is Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about lithium. We all know that lithium is um, very important for all EVs, Aptera included. And if you look at this graph of lithium carbonate uh, commodity prices, they used to be about $63,000 per ton. And uh, then earlier, over the past two years, it has skyrocketed about 400% and uh, reached up to about $500,000. Um, and now it's down to about four fifty. dollars Anyway, there's this, been this huge run up in lithium prices um, because of supply chain issues and also because of the increased demand for lithium. If you look at who the major producers of lithium are, currently Australia is the largest producer, followed by Chile, then China, then Argentina, Brazil, Zimbabwe, and Portugal. Now, Australia, most of their mining comes from um, solid ore, and they use acid leaching and solid ore, for the solid ore. And then Chile use, is in the salt flats. And then, you know, we did a video about this a, couple, a while back, and basically they have um, these salt flats that, uh, that they have to use a ton of water to, go, to, make the, to extract the lithium out of the salt flats. And the problem is, is it takes about, I think, half a million gallons of water for each um, ton of lithium that's extracted out of these um, salt flats. And these salt flats in Bolivia and Chile and Argentina are some of the driest places on Earth. And they're using what little water they have um, to extract lithium because that um, makes money. And basically, the local farmers and indigenous people in this area are being starved of water, which is not a not a great thing. And also, if you look at it from um, since you know I'm in America, and America is one of the largest consumers of um, energy and electric, you know, vehicles and presumably electrical vehicles in the future. And you don't see the U.S. on this list. So basically, we would be very dependent on um, imports of lithium or lithium ion batteries which is uh, not a great place to be so there are lithium deposits in america and the largest known lithium deposit in america is in this area called thacker pass and there is this company called lithium americas that is um, wanting to develop thacker pass and they've gotten the permits and everything and they've started development of the mine currently it's being um it's in there's a there's a federal case um, brought about by many indigenous um, tribal groups as well as environmental groups. This uh, this Thacker Pass area is in an area on the border between Oregon and Nevada, and if you've ever been there uh, to this area, it's it's right here. This is Thacker Pass right here, and if if you guys have driven through America, the lower 48 states. You know that this area of northern Nevada uh, and southern Oregon and Idaho is some of the least populated and kind of remote and desolate place in the lower 48. Um, I've driven through there and there's really, you know, you can drive some of these roads and not see another car for like 30 minutes to an hour. It's, it's fairly um, unpopulated. Anyway, this is where it's at. And uh, a little bit about... The thing they suspect that there's about three tons of lithium carbonate in this place, and they figure they can produce about sixty thousand tons per year. Now that almost equals the output of Australia. Now, I, now I don't know if uh, this this is talking about just straight elemental lithium, because if this is straight elemental lithium, then um, that's different than lithium carbonate. Lithium carbonate is probably about half lithium. So um, 60,000 60, pounds uh, of lithium carbonate is probably only about 30,000 tons of lithium. Um, I could go back and do the chemistry on it, but um, maybe one of you guys want to put in the comments exactly what it is, because you'd have to look at the uh, atomic weights of carbon, oxygen, and lithium and uh, do the stoichiometry and figure that out. Uh, but it's probably about half uh, anyways, there's a lot. There's a lot of lithium in here. And they figure they can mine lithium for about 50 years. 
and the initial capital. So this company, Lithium Americas, is going to invest a trillion dollars in uh, building up this mine. And they figure that their earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and all that is going to be about half a trillion dollars, excuse me, half a billion dollars. So they're going to put a billion dollars into, sorry, I misspoke, it's a billion dollars. And they're going to have an annual um, income of about half a billion dollars. And that's a, a net present value of about uh, $3 billion. Uh, so, you know, it would be very profitable for the company to develop this thing. However, um, they're running, uh, so yeah, the lithium uh, pass lithium mine, the Thacker pass lithium mine is a solid ore mine open pit. This is much like the mines in Australia. And what they do is they crush the ore, they acid leach the lithium out of there and then process the uh, acid leaching. They use sulfuric acid to leach it. So you can tell this is not the greatest thing for the environment to be using, to be doing an open pit mine with crushing and then leaching. Um, so you can see why some people may be against it. And this, there was an article here that's saying proposed lithium mine near the Oregon Nevada border stir concerns among tribes. And they're talking about how these tribes still gather their traditional foods there. And, and then it's kind of odd because a lot of environmentalists are for electric vehicles because they are much better in terms of, um, emissions at the tailpipe and overall emissions during their use. However, um, mining for lithium and cobalt and nickel and those kinds of things are fairly degrading to the environment. So you have environmental groups that are kind of for this and environmental groups that are against this. It's kind of an odd thing where, see, here we go. And so it's now tangled up in courts. There's a, there's a federal case. I think that's the last barrier before this mine gets going. Um, but, you know, the Biden administration uh, really wants lithium mining to happen in America um, because they feel like being too reliant on f foreign sources for this isn't good since we're moving probably to a um, an electric-based transportation scheme uh, worldwide and also in America. All right, so the interesting thing is that I've, what I found out recently is that there is evidently a large amount of lithium near the Salton Sea. And I'm particularly interested in the Salton Sea because Salton Sea is like fairly close to where I live. It's not too far away. And Salton Sea has always been sort of interesting to me um, because of how it was formed and what it what the history behind it is. Here's a little graph about um, how the Salton Sea was formed. Um, this is the Gulf of California. And... Um, you know, the geologists suspect that at one point this was all connected, this whole area. And then as the Colorado River Delta came in, deposited a bunch of silt across here and then formed this um, thing that they used to call Lake Cahuya. And then it fell down. And then 19, in 1900, um, people were digging some irrigation ditches, irrigation dikes or canals between the uh, Colorado River into this area, which was an agricultural area. And then there was some flooding and it overgrew its, uh, it, they kind of lost control of it. And the entire outflows of the Colorado River ran into this area for a period of two or three years and formed this huge lake, which they called the Salton Sea. And eventually they repaired it and they made the uh, Colorado go back into the, um, Gulf of California, as it does now. And then this shrank down. Um, and as it shrank down, it became a little lake they called the Salton Sea. And in the 1950s, this was a popular resort area, just like uh, Palm Springs um, still is today. There was a, uh, it was a popular area to go. So the Salton Sea today kind of looks like this. There's still a lot of agricultural activity in the Imperial Valley in the southern part and a little bit on the northern part of it. And much of this is irrigated from still from the Colorado River. And these um, agricultural areas have been, all their runoff and fertilizer has been running into this area. And since there's no outflow, the salinity and toxicity of the lake have been going up. And this is what it looks like now. There's large um, uh, fish die-offs because it's just too polluted and too uh, the salinity is too high to support life. Um, and it used to look like this. People used to bring their boats there. It was a big resort area. People would go swimming. Now, now there's a bunch of fish bones and dead fish along the 
the sides and a lot of the resort areas are abandoned and there's a lot of abandoned buildings um, uh, in the area. And uh, interesting thing is there's a lot of geothermal activity in the area too. So there's these like mud volcanoes uh, that have really hot water that come out of them. And that's, that leads us to the interesting point here, which is this thing, these, uh, these mud volcanoes actually are used um, to make geothermal power. And there's several geothermal power uh, stations in this area that are just using the hot water that's coming out of these mud volcanoes and deeper down to generate street steam to drive turbines to make electricity and so what they realized at some point is that this the the brine the hot brine that's coming up has lithium in it and they think that there's somewhere between 1 million to up to 15 million tons of lithium in here and so currently they have this this is the scheme is that they would take the water that's coming out of there it's hot brine then it drives these turbines and makes electricity and then they push the water after it's cooled down back into the into the ground so it's a closed loop system they're not adding anything it's it's just the hot water that's coming out is now it's being pumped down as cold water and it's generating electricity however there is lithium and calcium and iron and magnesium and salt in this thing and you can extract these things out of here and um, they know of ways of using um, different methods to extract this out of here and this would is a closed loop system and it doesn't you don't use any water extra so it doesn't take up water and it doesn't um, add anything else so this is theoretically um, a relatively clean thing i mean the area is pretty polluted to begin with but you're not making it quote more polluted than it is and you could generate um, a lot of lithium out of here. There is this great uh, video um, by uh, CNBC that you can watch and if you're interested in it, I would definitely watch this. It covers more than 10,000 acres. There are 11 operating power plants at the South. Yeah, so this is the geothermal plants. And see 10 owned by Berkshire Hathaway and one by Energy Source. You can see the salt and sea in the background here. So yeah, I would watch this if you're more interested in this topic. So theoretically, um, this is a very economically depressed area, a lot of pollution um, and not a lot of economic activity here. But if they did this, it would bring a lot of um, economic activity in here, could generate a lot of lithium, um, is theoretically five times larger than the Thacker Pass deposits, um, and seems to be one of the cleanest ways of, of generating lithium there is. Um, it seems much cleaner than using sulfuric acid extraction and much more environmentally friendly than using up a ton of water in, in the uh, driest places on earth to extract it. So because of this, I'm fairly excited that if this does happen, it's kind of right next door to me. Um, it would be a very interesting thing. A lot of people think so, and, and some companies are even launching. So this was, um, reported just last month, the state vault wants to make a 54 gigawatt hour gigafactory to make lithium ion batteries in the Imperial Valley. I believe they're thinking this place is going to produce lithium and geothermal power. That's perfect because now they have the power and the raw materials to make, um, lithium ion batteries so that's what's ha what's possibly happening they want to do this and they want to do this and this and um, i think a lot of people are on board i'm after what i've researched on it i think out of all the ways of extracting lithium this seems to be the best and and it's right next door to me and so i'm pretty excited about the uh the proposition Hey, so tell me what you guys' thoughts are on it, and um, thanks for watching. And also a big thanks to our supporting members at the 100 kilowatt hour level is Enoch, Brian, and Jaren, and at the 40 kilowatt level is Curtis, Jeremy, Tom, Dean, Go Climb a Rock, Adimchi, Neil, John, Don, Paul, Harry, and Paul Ree. Thanks so much, guys, and thanks to everyone who watches and likes the videos and comments. 
Um, you guys are all helping out um, our community.